Hello, Paul Tranny here, and I want to dive into fonts, typography, and then modifying this type in Illustrator. So let's start out with the defaults, to be honest with you. Because typically, when you select the type tool, you'll click, and what do you get? You get Myriad Pro. How often do you use this? Zero times? Then you probably need to change it. You can change that by going to Window, down to Type, and go into Character Styles, okay? And if it's in brackets, that means that's the default character style. So that's what you need to change. Just double click on that one right there. Basic character formats. What do you do? You change this. In fact, there's a myriad variable concept font. I actually already hit enter, but check this out. Like this is perfect. This gives me so many more options if I want to stick with that font. This is a variable concept font. That's why you have different widths and height. If you're making lots of logos, maybe you just want to start out with larger type. You can do that 48 point. But now, uh, that's my default font. So when I click again, I'm going to get a chance to dive right into making a logo. Uh, also, what you want to do is you probably want to save this as a template file. Um, and uh, this is the main file you pick every time you start a new project in good old Illustrator. There's another thing you could do though too. So check this out. As we click and drag, we get paragraph text. And guess what? We get text that I've actually hacked. So there is a way to actually hack that text. It's gonna be, it's gonna mean going into your application folder into Illustrator and you'll see this placeholder text. That's what you need to change. Uh, get on somebody else's machine, throw their name in there, mess with them, do something like that. That'd be fun. You get the idea. And uh, let's kind of move on because that's kind of what I want to focus on. Since I have this font selected, I want to dive into uh, what we can do with this variable font, right? Selecting that. This is what the variable font enables you to do. Change the weight and the width per character. What it's doing is it's actually changing the, we'll leave that one the way it is, um, changing two different fonts, by the way. Changing two different fonts is what it's doing. Um, and if I did this drop down and showed you this long list, there's like a ton of fonts in here. That's what we're changing to. So we're not actually uh, doing a pseudo bold or anything like that, but now you can see obviously what I'm doing. Making a little logo that's getting thinner and thinner. One more R in here and then we are done. But we can go beyond that. I wanna show you a fun, just an amazing font uh, that's super cool. There's our new logo, thinner. Okay, let's do something else. Let's do disco, right? We'd want to pick the appropriate font for that. Check this out. This is also a variable concept font. Uh, we're going to type in chi. It's called the chi variable font. Okay. It does cost money, but it is super cool because not only do we get, uh, we go beyond the normal settings like bold and extended and condensed and italic because we can add yeast to this, Brrr, making it thicker. It's like dough that's rising, right? So we have a disco donut. We can change gravity, right? Makes it look even more disco-like, but it looks very heavy. And temperature, you ready for temperature? Temperature makes it looks like, look like it's melting. So that's the control that you could have and um, with a font, which is just amazing uh, what you can do with uh, variable concept fonts. Disco Inferno, there you go. Okay, so let's move on from these fonts. I kind of covered those. And by the way, you should also know how to uh, sort and refine fonts. So if I did want a decorative font, I can click right here, and then I can roll through the fonts this way. Uh, not only that, I can actually download fonts that I might not have. So you go to Find More, uh, and maybe I'll find a font in here that might work for this Disco Inferno right here. Guess what? It's tapping into um, Adobe Fonts and I can activate that font so I'm not jumping out to a website, downloading it, unzipping it, installing it, relaunching your app, whatever. It automatically installs the font from Illustrator. Super cool. Hopefully you're learning a couple of things. Let's go into 
uh, modifying fonts. Because what a lot of people do is like once they have our, their text, they'll start breaking it apart. And sorry for the scary image, but we're gonna go with this, the witching hour. Okay, and we're gonna make it look like these letters are all tangled up in this tree or something. Just make it look chaotic since it's for this scary suspenseful movie. Well, you don't need to break up the text or create outlines like a lot of people do. Uh, you could actually use the touch type tool. So right over here, touch type tool, selecting that. And now I can take this text and move this down, move this up, right? Uh, have as much fun with this as I want. We're going to move this down. We're going to rotate this H so it's kind of tilting in that way. It's a little far away from the eye. Guess what? We'll move that eye in, right? Take this down, rotate it as well. So we could change the size, position, the rotation of this text without breaking it apart. And guess what? You guessed it. It's all on one line, right? That is... Uh, what you can do with the touch type tool, okay? Uh, if you want to actually distort the text beyond that, that's another thing. Per letter, it's going to mean you're going to have to outline it. But that's pretty darn awesome. Touch type tool allows you to change that content. There's also um, color or, excuse me, multicolor fonts. These are all multicolor fonts. Abalone by Maria Grunland. Love this font. Uh, look, you want a unicorn font? You can have... A unicorn font so I encourage you to search for multicolor fonts and use those accordingly but not only that you can make your own so I've made some and I'm gonna show you how to do that really fast because how were those made those were made using something called we'll go to window extensions font self maker okay this is for Illustrator and it's for Photoshop it's gonna require um, in fact, let's take a look. It's gonna require CC 2017 or newer, or excuse me, 2018 or newer. Seven, 2017 or older, it's not gonna work. You know, older versions of InDesign, older versions of Photoshop. So just upgrade to the latest or update to the latest and uh, go from there. So um, I'm gonna make a new font right here, new font. And what you wanna do is typically like take a word like adhesion, which is a popular um, control word or control letters once you have h h o n y usually you can make a lot of the other letters and then you make your own alphabet sort of creating what you want like i would do right over here it's like hey i want to make an a hey let's go with that let's make a very abstract new font and let's have fun with the color okay so that's what i've already done by the way and Let's just turn that on. Here's a multicolor font. Let's nest this off to the side and uh, move this out of the way. But this is my multicolor font that I have created right here. Okay. So what you can do, by the way, these are all actual, actually already named. So they're grouped accordingly. So the A is right here and it's already grouped as A, B, C. So you just, you, you, you set it up correctly. You just select all of these letters, right? And yes, I could drop in one at a time, but if you select all the letters, like I'm doing right now, dropping them in here, it's gonna recognize them based on this layer name, which is one of the few reasons why you should name your layer, and it names them correctly, okay? Do the same thing for this lowercase. The only difference between the uppercase and the lowercase in this case is there's different colors. I inverted, I swapped the colors. Um, and that's the difference between the lowercase and the uppercase. So I basically had fun with it. Dropping this in, let's do the lowercase. What do we have? There they are, A. There's the end of the Z, which is uppercase, and here's the lowercase. Right from there, um, all we need to do is save this. And yes, we could add more information, but right now, uh, made a font right create okay put that on my desktop here's my made a font and all you need to do is open that save font right here install it yeah i could do also the letters and uh, excuse me the the numbers and everything but you can see that as i dive into this zoop you get the idea in a second we'll just type it made Oh, let's turn off our filter, clear all. There it is, made a font. And guess what? It 
works just like that. Here's another big one for you. Ready for this? This is what I did as well. I said, hey, you know what? Let's make something even more practical. Let's make icons and turn this into a font. So now I have an icon font. So anytime, say in this footer, I can come in here, F. F actually is for face, uh, Facebook. So all I need to do is I need to change it to my icon font. There's my icon font changing to F. You know, I want Instagram. I want Twitter. I want YouTube. You get the idea. That's all done with a font. And that's the power of multicolor fonts and fonts in general in Illustrator. So thanks so much for watching.